This time, level three of Kirchhoff's Laws. Now, things get a little bit more tricky here. Let's have a look at this one. What reading should the ammeter give? Well, what we're doing with the ammeter is we're looking for paths through the ammeter where we know what current must be flowing. Let's see. Now, the thing about a voltmeter that's very useful to know is that voltmeters, or at least these ideal voltmeters in the quiz app, have infinite impedance. So there is no current flowing through there. So all of the current that this ammeter measures must be flowing through this 57 volt voltage source. Now, here at this node in the circuit, we have 27 milliamps going up and 51 milliamps going there. So apply Kirchhoff's current law to that node in the circuit there, and the total current flowing in this direction here must be 51 plus 27 milliamps, which is 51 milli plus 27 milli. And that's the current that must be flowing through here, in this direction. None of it is flowing through the voltmeter, so all of that must be coming along here. In other words, it must have been flowing through the ammeter, and then coming up here, and then along here, and then splitting into the 27 milliamps up there, and the 51 milliamps along there. So the total current through the ammeter, from red to black, must be 51 milli plus 27 milli. Fine. Again, you get much faster at these with practice. The other type of question might be a voltmeter question. And here, the idea is you've got to get from the black to the red, only going through nodes of which you know what the voltage is. Don't worry about the question marks at the moment. We've got to get from there to there. Now, we don't know what the voltage across a current source is. A current source will establish whatever voltage is required in order to make sure that that current is flowing. Could be anything. We do know the voltage across the voltage sources, which are these things with the plus and the minus sign in them. So let's try and get from the black terminal to the red terminal only going through voltage sources. First one, this one. 32 millivolts and we're going down. This one, 75 millivolts and again we're going down. And then this one, 15 millivolts and we're going up from the negative to the positive. So to get from there to there, we've gone down by 32 millivolts, down by another 75 millivolts, and then up by 15 millivolts. So that's minus 32 millivolts minus 75 millivolts plus 15 millivolts. Total minus 92 millivolts and that's what the meter will measure. This one looks pretty much... Oh, no, it's not the same, is it? This time we can't go round here because that's a current source and we don't know the voltage between there and there. So we'll go from here, down here, and then we could go through this one, and then up here, and then up here, and then get to red. And taking this path through the circuit, we'd only be going through voltage sources, so we can work out the voltage between there and there. First of all, down by 79, that's minus 79, and then up by 46, and then up by 27, and then up by 16. And all of those are in millivolts. Answer, total of 10 millivolts between there and there. Correct answer. Here, we've got some resistors. Let's have a look here. Again, you've got to get from there to there, only going through components that you know what the voltage drop across them is. And this one's actually quite easy. We just go this way, up 3.7 volts, 
and then this way down 3.6 volts so the net result would be just 0.1 volts or 100 millivolts. They're not all that easy. Okay, this is a voltmeter one, and we're trying to get from there to there, only through known voltage sources. And we can do that, actually, that's very easy. It's just equal to the value of this voltage source. And I know that because this is an ideal ammeter. An ideal ammeter has no resistance. And therefore, the voltage between there and there, across the ammeter, must be zero. That means I can go from the negative terminal of the voltmeter here, along here, up by 690 millivolts, and then the voltage there is the same as the voltage there, so I can just carry on and carry on and arrive at the positive terminal of the voltmeter, and the only component that I need to worry about, in terms of its value, is this one, 690 millivolts. And that is the closed loop that I'm applying Kirchhoff's voltage law to. They're not all that easy, but it's quite nice to find one that is. An ammeter one. Right. So we're looking for a node... Ah, actually, that's quite easy. Apply Kirchhoff's current law to that node there. Total current flowing out is 50 milliamps this way and 50 milliamps this way, so there must be 100 milliamps flowing this way. That's from the red to the black, so that would be a positive current. So the answer is 100 milliamps, which I could just write as 0.1. Saves a bit of typing. Fine. See if I can find a slightly harder ammeter one. There, actually, in some senses, that's even easier. The answer is 72 milliamps. How do I know that? Well, this is an ideal voltmeter. And ideal voltmeters pass no current across them. So there is an infinite resistance, in effect, inside an ideal voltmeter. If there's no current flowing through the ideal voltmeter, then all of the 72 milliamps flowing down here must be flowing through the ammeter. And it's from the red to the black, so it will be a positive current that the ammeter will register. Answer, 72 milliamps. Simple. They're not all easy like that, but sometimes they are. I think that's probably enough for level three. Good luck.